Here's the next notion that we're going to study. There are two dual concepts. One is called maximum clique size. So given a graph, we simply want to determine what is the largest clique it contains as an induced subgraph. Here's a graph. I might ask questions like this. How many cut vertices does this graph have? You're supposed to say four. Everybody see four cut vertices? Okay. What's the largest clique contained in this graph? What's the size of the largest clique? A clique is a subgraph, every vertex, every pair of vertices joined by an edge. You're supposed to say that the maximum clique size is three. You can find triangles, cliques of size 3, but you cannot find cliques of size 4, 5, 6, or anything larger. Here's a triangle right there. Oh, there's a triangle. There's a triangle. There's a triangle. There are lots of, lots of triangles. Now, if I add edges, the clique size can only go up. Tell me when the clique size becomes four. Okay. Now, what you're supposed to begin to be thinking is that <coughs> turned in the click size might be hard. Yeah, because you see, you're really tied to the picture, aren't you? No? Yeah, okay. See the clique of size four? Okay. So now, if I just turned on that picture and said, What's the clique size? What's the largest clique? It might take you a minute or two to find the four, right? It, would take, it might take you quite a bit to convince yourself without any doubt that there aren't any cliques of size five. Now, if I just put tons and tons and tons of edges in there and produce cliques of size 10, but not 11, you have got a world of hurt trying to tell me that. First of all, the picture is going to be a mess. But even if I give it to you as a data file, finding the maximum clique size is very, very hard. All right. Now, here's another notion we're going to talk about. It's the idea of colorings. So here is a set of chemicals and the edges are some notion of volatility.
What that means is that this is a chemical and this is another chemical and I have an edge between them. There's some way in which the two chemicals can interact. And we have to store these chemicals in locations. And you don't want to store these two chemicals in the same location because bad things might happen. Corrosion, explosions, uh, various things. So what I'd like you to do is to store these chemicals in a way that I never put two chemicals joined by an edge in the same location. Well, that's obvious. Give each chemical its own room. Problem solved. Okay, real world dilemma. The warehouse isn't that big. There are not that many storage rooms in it. So what's the real applied problem? Use the smallest number of rooms. Use the smallest number of rooms. So I might come along and say, room one, room one, room one, room one, room one, room one. Could I put anybody else in room one? Maybe this one? That's, that works? Put that one in room one. Anybody else could go in room one? Here? That's okay, isn't it? Yes, no? Yes? Okay, now. If I did, if I made those assignments, is it the case now that no one else could go in room one? Okay, let's try something else. Put this guy in room two, this guy in room two, two, two. 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 If I, if, if I make all those assignments, can I put anybody else in the room too? Now I'm stuck. So we're going up to room three. Room three. Room three. Room three. Can I put anybody else in room three? Uh, right here? Okay. Anybody else fit in room three? All chemicals stored? There's one more right in the middle, isn't it? So... Put that one in room four, all by its lonesome. Now you know what's going to happen next, right? The manager starts screaming at me. Trotter, you idiot. You used four rooms. Any nitwit could have done this with two. Now I think I can explain quickly why it can't be done with two. You got an explanation? My choice, my choice. I'm just sticking them in rooms. i just sticking them in rooms. Why did I do that? I'm trying to make, a, a, I hope, an interesting example. Why is it the case that no one could put all these chemicals in only two rooms? Yeah, over here. Yeah, so oh, oh, there's a triangle. Oh, the <laughs> big size is at least three. 
if two of those were in separate rooms, the third one couldn't go in either of them. So it, automatically, if you have a clique of some size, you need that many rooms for free. Nobody could do it with two. But can you do it with three? What's this probably? You know that's going to get you screamed at. You say it's probably and you haven't done it? Question. Bulls link together by the edges. The only thing that the, the picture of the edge is supposed to capture is the notion that there's some kind of interaction between these two objects. And the, the constraint is they simply cannot be signed, assigned the number. I'm just using this as a, a motivation. You can think of this entirely in an abstract form. I give you a graph. You are supposed to assign, say, positive integers to the vertices. And the constraint is that no two vertices that are joined by an edge can be assigned the same integer. That's called a coloring. And so what we're studying, what we're steering toward is the notion of the parameter that's called the chromatic number of G, chi of G, that's that Greek letter chi, and that's the fewest number of colors. If I give you a graph with a thousand vertices, how would you like to have the twin problems of finding the maximum clique size of the graph and finding the chromatic number of the graph? You would not. You would not be happy. I would not be happy. There's no human on the planet who would be happy with that assignment. These are hard problems. But it turns out that they are very, very important.